It's really interesting to see the kids when they get it, when they have that light bulb moment, when they can look at a sentence and go, oh, I've just found a simile, or I've just found a metaphor, or then they bring you a piece of their writing and they've done it and you haven't prompted them to. So it's a really rewarding experience. Our journey at North Adelaide Primary School, um, it, was, it was very exciting. What we did is we analysed um, our data and we realised from our student achievement data that students weren't achieving as well in writing as what we would have liked, particularly our students in the higher bands. So uh, we worked and looked at um, student examples of writing and teachers worked in their collaborative groups and analysed what, what were the areas that students actually weren't achieving in, what, what were the components we needed to improve. We found that as we were analysing, there were actually four areas right across the levels of schooling which were an issue and that was fantastic because it meant there was a certain um, components that we really needed to delve deeply in. I've always loved teaching writing. Before I was a little bit lost, I didn't really have much of a structure when I was teaching writing. The children also kind of floundered a little bit, you know, I would say, oh you need to go and make that sentence better and they kind of didn't really know what I was talking about, they'd just often just bring me back the same the same work, they might change a word here or there, but they didn't really understand how they could improve their writing. I think we've noticed that in South Australia we've had um, uh, challenges with our writing data for a number of years. I'm a NAPLAN marker and it was certainly evident to me uh, that many of our students lack sophistication and they don't necessarily understand the purpose for their writing. Meta language is talking about language, which when you think about it is kind of fundamental to being able to write well. Before we were using meta-language, students were finding it really difficult to create goals for their learning or goals for their writing. Whereas now, because they know what they're looking for in a text, they can analyse that and they are more self-regulated because they can say, this is what I'm doing and I can use our Bump It Up rules or our Bright Path teaching points and they can say, this is what I need to do for my next step. So it really creates independent, self-regulated learners. Now I've given you an extra one today, and this one is a circumstances prompt. So can anybody tell me what we think circumstances might be just before we talk about it deeply? Yes, Leo. When, how, where, why? Yes, so it's when we are adding to a simple sentence to give it a little bit more description and to give it some more detail. So in this example here, they've said the lion proud, that's the simple sentence. How was he prowling, Leo? Uh, silently. Silently. So we could say, early in the morning, the lion prowled silently. And that's just turned our simple sentence into a sentence that's much more detailed and gives us a lot more specific information. The areas that we found needed to be um, delved into deeply were vocabulary, um, editing, punctuation in particular in relation to editing, uh, sentence structure and also the elaboration of ideas. That became our site improvement plan. So the uh, goal in our site improvement plan was to look at how students can um, improve in writing, that student achievement can improve in writing particularly in the higher bands um, and our challenge of practice became about providing students with explicit feedback in relation to those four components. Um, and we knew that once we had that, we were going to do, achieve really well. Whenever we start any kind of piece of writing, we always, I'll always do an example first, then, so model what this is what it should look like, and then we'll do one as a group. So let's have a think of some ideas. You know, there's always the little bright sparks in the class who are going to have put their hands up and have lots of creative and different ideas. So then we'll create one together and then the children go off and create their own. And I feel like that has made a huge difference as well, especially for those children who may struggle with literacy, to have that scaffold and a guide to, oh, that's what my writing needs to look like. We're moving past just looking at verbs and adjectives and nouns and we're really digging deeper. So when we look at a verb now, we look at it in four ways. We can look at a saying verb, so instead of using just the word said, which a lot of kids will just use said because it's the one they're most familiar with, we can dig a little deeper and it can be yelled or it can be shouted or whispered and all of that gives more description and gives the reader the ability to engage deeper with the text. And we found talking about what verb choices they've made, what noun groups they've selected, how they've organised their clauses, have they got a simple compound complex sentence, 
if the students can use that language, they can then set the goal of how they're going to improve their writing. And then if we can get kids as, at the second stage to go through some guided instruction, so they've watched it be modelled, and now they go and have a play with that piece of language themselves, maybe using a mentor text, and then they go through and independently try to add that feature of language to their own writing, and then you come back and re-engage as a whole group so that you can go through the things that you've noticed about your own writing or how did you apply something an author had used in that area of language into your own work. So in a typical lesson, when I'm introducing a new concept or a new feature of language, then I will usually run it through in a literature circle. So I'll work with a small group on that aspect of language. We'll usually have some kind of visual prompt. We'll have a mentor text and then we will have a play with how an author has used that themselves. At the moment, we're using this book, Hands at Biscuits, as our mentor text. So last week we went through and we looked for all the processes in the text. So that's looking for all of the verbs. Chose a few different pieces of text. We picked out all of the processes and we sorted them into the four different categories of processes. And we looked at, well, why did the author use those words? What, why did he make those choices? What was he trying to convey to the reader? We've been looking at the participants in the story. So the who and the what's in the story. Um, we, again, we looked at the same chunks of text and we picked them out. We used our own noun groups charts that we have and we made up some noun groups of our own. So obviously as a teacher, I'm, I really strive to get the best out of my students and reflecting back on my practice definitely helps me to improve on their learning. And using the guidebooks, I've just recently started to have a look through the guidebooks and it's really helping me to improve my practice. And it's great to give me a bit of a guide on where to next, what I need to do in my, in my teaching. I'm going to give you a sentence that is very simple and we're going to have a go at making it a little bit more complex. Can you write the bird? And now we're going to take our green, which is for our process. Now what could our bird be doing? Jumped. Jumped. The bird jumped. So using your circumstances prompt, I want you to give me a when. Okay, what have we got? What have you guys written? The bird jumped in the afternoon. Beautiful. What have we got over here? The bird jumped early in the morning. The bird jumped early in the morning. So we've got two different indications of a time when this happened. That's another one. They all make sense, don't they? The guidebooks are an excellent source, uh, particularly in the orange and uh, pink or the Inspire space. They've got some great resources here where they can unpack elements of functional grammar. So they've got some hyperlinks to great resources and the department through Bright Path team and also the Yield Language and Literacy levels which have just uh, been rebadged into the LEAP levels have excellent resources and professional learning around functional grammar and how we can talk to kids about their language choices. Before we started using functional grammar or before we started using the literacy guidebooks, our kids were looking at sentences as a whole. So they weren't really able to look at different parts of a sentence in isolation. And that's really important because if you don't have that, then you can't add detail and it's really hard to engage the reader as well. So we've been working really deeply on getting past looking at a sentence or a simple sentence as, you know, has a verb, has a noun or has a process and a participant um, and this is what they did and really what can we add to that because they weren't able to do that. The guidebooks have been a great lever for me as a literacy coach because it's been the first time we've had quality evidence-based pedagogy and practices in the hands of teachers that they can put their fingers on. And we don't have to use them in sequence that you're just an inspired school. We actually reflect through the different aspects of oral language, reading or writing throughout the guidebook. So particularly in the maintain momentum space and the inspire is where the functional grammar sits. So that meta language, we're really trying to build teachers capabilities and students to be able to articulate how they use uh, language in their writing. North Adelaide Primary School, as many of the schools in our portfolio, have a big emphasis on lifting students' writing. We've been really successful with uh, our NAPLAN data in Year 3, uh, with many students achieving in the high bands, and then they get to a, often that Year 5 uh, slump in that writing becomes more challenging insofar as the demands of NAPLAN. What I love about my job is the opportunity to work with leaders who are really strategic in lifting their 
teachers' capacity to uh, lead student achievement. The decisions that they've made in their writing now has just changed completely. They don't just look at a sentence as a whole now, they'll say, this is why I chose to put this word there. And they can have a discussion about, oh, did I use the right word? Could I have used something else? And they can talk about that. I'm really proud of what um, staff have managed to do. Our teachers have worked exceptionally hard um, and we're very lucky to have the staff that we've had. The amount of work put in into really delving deeply into the writing process and making sure that explicit feedback was given to students was really exciting. It was lovely once we got all our results in that plan and Bright Path to be able to celebrate as a team with, with what we've achieved. Um, and we knew we had achieved, but to also have that information coming on paper and to actually have the results and the evidence was just fantastic. So as a staff, it's been a fantastic process that we've really enjoyed and we're incredibly proud of.